Section 2.1, Solution of Linear Systems by the Echelon Method. Uh, in the past, we had graphed using uh, just one linear straight line. But what happens now if we decide that we want to graph two of those lines together on the same plane? Well, there's three options that can happen. The first option is that they intersect and they have a solution at the point in which they intersect. The second option is they would have no solutions. This is the ins inconsistent case. And this means that they have parallel lines. So no solution means we have parallel lines. Or we can have infinitely many solutions. This is the dependent case, meaning that it's the same line. So if you were to graph two lines, um, and they ended up being the same line, they would be right on top of one another. Okay. Um, to solve a system of linear equations, we're going to need to, in, to create an equivalent system. So we're going to manipulate the equations to make them work in our favor. We can do the following, and we'll keep the system true. So we can exchange any two equations, so reverse them around. We can multiply an entire equation by any non-zero real number. So any positive or negative number we can multiply an equation by. And we can also replace any, any equation by a non-zero multiple of that equation and then add it to another multiple of any other equation. And I know that seems kind of weird, so we'll go over that together. We're going to use the echelon method to help solve the system of equations. The echelon method uses the rules above to help simplify in a systematic manner. Ultimately, our goal is to try to eliminate vari a variable in order to simplify. So, let's solve the system of equations. I have 3x plus 10y equals 115, and 11x plus 4y equals 95. So, we want to determine what location, if we were to graph these two equations, where they would cross one another, and hopefully they do. So, I'm going to start off by trying to eliminate... I'm going to try to eliminate the x variable here. So I need to find a common multiple between 3 and 11. Well, a common multiple of 3 and 11 would be 33. One would have to, and then I'm going to add them together. So one would have to be positive, and one would have to be negative. So I'm going to multiply my first equation here by 11. And I'm going to multiply my second equation here by negative 3. So when I multiply everything in that equation by 11, I end up with 33x plus 110y equals, 12, equals 1265. And when I multiply the bottom by negative 3, I get negative 33x minus 12y equals negative 285. So now let's add these together. You'll notice when I add these together that my x's cancel. I have 98y and that is equal to 980. To get y by itself, I'll need to divide by 98. And when I do that, y is equal to 10. Well, now that I know what y is, we need to determine what x is. So to do that, I'm going to plug in my y to either one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one you choose. I'll just choose the top one. So I'm going to replace my y with 10 and get x by itself. So 3x plus 100 equals 115. 3x equals 15 when I subtract 100 and divide by 3. So x is equal to 5. We write in a ordered pair. So the ordered pair 5, 10 is the solution. This is the location where they would cross one another on the on the graph, and this would be their solution. Let's try 2x plus 3y equals 12, and 3x minus 4y equals 1. So again, we're going to try to eliminate the x variable. 
Um, one will need to be positive and one will need to be negative. The least common multiple between 2 and 3 is 6, so I'm going to multiply the top by 3 and the bottom by negative 2 and multiply through each one, giving me 6x plus 9y equals 36 and negative 6x plus 8y equals negative 2. We'll add these together. Our x's eliminate, giving us 17y equals 34. To get y by itself, we'll divide by 17. So y equals 2, which is awesome. Now we need to find x, so we'll need to plug into either one of the equations above. It doesn't matter which one we choose. I'll just choose the top one. So I'm going to replace y with 2 and get x by itself. So 2x plus 6 equals 12. Subtract 6. So 2x equals 6. Divide by 2. So x equals 3. Awesome. So this one works. We have 3, 2 is the location in which this uh, system will cross one another. Let's try another 2x minus 3y equals 6 and negative 4x plus 6y equals 8. So if I want to eliminate the x variable, and you certainly could um, eliminate y, it doesn't matter which, which one you choose, the same principle will happen. Um, so if I wanted to eliminate the x variable, notice that the 2 and the negative 4 um, they're opposites of each other. So really, and the m least common multiple between 2 and 4 is 4. So all I need to do is multiply my top equation by 2, and nothing will need to be multiplied on the bottom. So I multiply my first equation by 2. We end up with 4x minus 6y e equals 12. Again, we don't need to multiply anything on the bottom since we already have, have that multiple. So again, when we add, we're going to eliminate the x variables. Oh boy, and we're also eliminating our y variables. So I have 0 equals 20. Well, this is false. 0 does not equal 20. And since this is not true, there is no solution. And if there is no solution, that means we have parallel lines, since they're never going to touch one another. Okay, Let's look at 3x minus y equals 4 and negative 6x plus 2y equals negative 8. So again, if we wanted to tackle the x variables, um, we see that the least common multiple between 3 and 6 would be 6. 1 is already negative, so I just need to multiply my first equation here by 2. And if I multiply across, we'll end up with 6x minus 2y equals 8. And if I add that to my bottom equation, we didn't need to multiply by anything since it already had that number. So if we, whoa, look at here, our x's cancel, our y's cancel, so I'm left with 0 equals 0. Well, this is a true statement, and because of this, we're going to have infinitely many solutions. And if we have infinitely many solutions, that means that these are the same lines. They're just on top of one another. All right. Katrina Bird invested in Coca-Cola stock and Wendy's stock. The Coca-Cola stock currently sells for $40 a share and the Wendy's stock for $8 a share. Her current investment is worth $6,720. Katrina has a total of 360 shares of stock. How many shares of each stock does she own? Well, first let's identify that X is going to be for the Coca-Cola shares. And let's let Y equal 
the Wendy shares. Okay, we know that it costs forty dollars per Coke share, and that it, we also know that if we add that to eight dollars per Wendy share, that we have a total of six thousand seven hundred twenty dollars invested altogether. So here's our monetary value. We also know that how many ever Coke shares, if we add that to how many ever Wendy shares, that we do have a total of a, a 360 shares altogether. Well, now we've created a system. So we want to know where they collide together so we can determine how many shares of each that we have. So if I want to eliminate the x variable, we need to multiply our bottom equation by negative 40. This will give us, we're not changing anything on our first equation, so 40x plus 80y equals 6,720. Our bottom equation will have negative 40x minus 40y equals negative 14,400. And again, we're going to add these together. Our x's cancel. I'm sorry, this should be just regular 8 not 80. Okay, so 8y minus 40y gives us negative 32y equal to negative 7,680. To get y by itself, we'll divide by negative 32. So y is equivalent to positive 240. So I know that uh, Katrina has 240 Wendy shares, but how many Coke shares does she have? Well, we can easily plug it into this equation here <coughs> in order to determine how many shares we have. So, x plus 240, our y is 240, equals 360. We'll subtract 240 from both sides. So, x is equal to 120. So, she has... 120 Coke shares, and she has 240 Wendy shares. You try. Olinda well, Rubio has $8,601 invested in coal stock, and, and Best Buy stock. Coal stock currently sells for $52 per share, and Best Buy stock sells for $27 per share. Belinda has a total of 188 shares of stock. How many shares of each stock does she own? At this time, please pause the video and work through this on your own, and we'll come together to work through it together. Let's let X represent Coles. And let's let Y represent Best Buy. <coughs> we know that it costs $52 per share of Kohl's. And if we add that to knowing that it costs $27 per share of Best Buy, and we have a total of $8,601. So there's our monetary row. We also know how many shares of stock do we have. We know that we have 188 shares together, so how many ever coals we have, plus how many shares of Best Buy we have, we know we have 188 altogether. Again, we'll want to eliminate our x variable, so to do that we're going to have to multiply our second equation by negative 52. We don't need to change our first equation. So we'll just rewrite it. And our second equation becomes negative 52x minus 52y equals negative 976. And we know we want to add these to eliminate. So our x variables eliminate. We're left with negative 25y equal to negative 1100 and 75. Getting y by itself by dividing by negative 25. y is equal to 47 shares. 
Well, that's awesome. But we need to know how, to, how, how many Kohl's shares we have. So we'll need to plug it into our equation here to determine. So we don't know how many Kohl's shares we have, but we do know we have 47 Best Buy shares and for a total of 188. So if we subtract, X will equal 141. So we have 141 Kohl's shares and we have 47 Best Buy shares. And this concludes section 2.1.